Well, good morning, Grace Church. Uh, I want to welcome you here in the sanctuary at the Cape Coral campus. I want to uh, add my welcome uh, to those who are watching online and to uh, the folks who are watching at our other campuses. Can we give a big shout out from here in the sanctuary to our friends who are watching at the other campuses? Give them a hello. Well, we are so grateful that you're here for the Send Global Conference, Missions Conference. It's one of our most exciting weeks throughout the year. And this year we're excited to once again have uh, Dr. Wes Griffin, uh, who is the founder of International Leadership Institute. Uh, he and his wife, Joy, uh, began this ministry. It began with a dream in their heart uh, that they would train leaders who in turn would become trainers of other leaders. You need to know that they're in 110 countries and that they've uh, trained over 120,000 leaders. So it's with great joy and delight uh, that uh, we welcome once again uh, to Grace Church, uh, Dr. Wes Griffin. Would you give him a great, warm Grace Church welcome? Well, good morning, Grace Church. It is an absolute joy and privilege to be with you for your missions conference. There was a pastor who was leading a worship service, and he asked if anybody needed special prayer. And one man raised his hand and said, I need prayer for my hearing. And the pastor said, I'd like to pray for you right now. And so he had the man come down to the front. The pastor took his hands, put them on the side of both of his ears, and then just began to pray loud and long and finished it by saying, in Jesus' name, be healed. Amen. He took his hands away, looked at him, and said, how is your hearing? And the man said, I don't know. It's not till next Tuesday. Grace Church, I'm glad you got that right there. What is this conference about? This is about us hearing fresh from God, a fresh word. A fresh word because Jesus said, you shall be my witnesses in your Jerusalem, your Judea, your Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And this year the theme of the conference is here, there, and everywhere. We're here gathered today on every single one of the campuses that God can just renew us fresh, that we can be a church that is giving and going and praying. I am a fisherman. My grandfather was a fisherman. My mom and dad were fishermen. I'm a fisherman. My children are fishermen and fisherwoman. One day if I'm blessed and I have grandchildren, I am going to teach them to fish. I love fishing. There is something about when I go fishing, it just taps something deep inside me. If you're a fisherman here, you know what I'm talking about. That may be one of the places where you are renewed in God's creation. I, I enjoy fishing. Look at the screen right here. I want to show you a fishing picture. That is a happy person, my friends. That's a fisherman. I want to show you another picture. Look at this one right here. There's another happy fisherman. That is me when I went fishing with a young man I'd helped disciple. He said to me, would you come out to Yellowstone where I'm working as an intern and let's do some fishing? And I said, absolutely. And I went to my closet and I got my grandfather's 1961 Runder Rod that I received when he passed away at 21. I literally drove to his funeral, walked in the door. I didn't say hi to anyone. I just said to my mom, who gets his rod? And I got the rod. I was the oldest grandchild. I was the one raised by my grandfather taking me fishing. We went camping many places and I always watched him use that rod and I always wanted to be able to go and catch a Yellowstone cutthroat trout with that rod. Let me just show you. I almost brought it, but let me at least show you the picture. There it is right there. I'm a fisherman. I love fishing. Now, the only thing I like better than fishing myself is taking somebody fishing. And my family, every year, we go to a secret place. Fishermen have secret places. A secret place, and we go camping, and we usually bring a friend or two. And one time, my daughter brought a friend who'd never caught a fish. I mean, like, never a fish. I didn't know she'd never caught a fish till we got actually into the, the boat. And you might wonder, what kind of boat does a missionary own? That would be called a kayak. A <laughs> kayak. It is a two-seater twin engines. 
We went fishing, and you know, it wasn't in about 15 minutes, and I helped this young college girl get, she hooked the first tarpon of her life. And so look at this picture of her. This is Katie. I mean, that's a happy fisher woman right there. She is so excited. And we fought this fish, and, and it was the first one ever. We got the fish up on the shore, pulled it up, and I said, lay down next to it. She said, why? I said, because I think the fish is bigger. I, <laughs> I love fishing. If you're a fisherman right now, you're drooling. You're thinking, wow. That is great. I love fishing. One day, Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. The people were crowding around him and listening to the Word of God. Jesus looked over and saw that there were two boats by the water's edge. And he asked the fishermen who were there washing their nets, Peter, James, and John, would that one of them be willing to let him get into one of the boats, and would they then push him out, man the boat, and let him speak to the crowd? There is something about preaching over water that sound just travels and resonates to great distances. So, in short order, Jesus is in a boat, and he is preaching to the crowds that are there, listening intently to the Word of God. Scripture says that when he'd finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out your nets into the deep. Put out your nets into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Now at that moment, I know what was going through Peter's mind because you see, I'm a fisherman. I'm a fisherman who usually catches fish. And the reason I usually catch fish when I'm fishing is I know the two rules. There are two rules to catching fish. Rule number one, if you're taking notes, this is a good place. Rule number one, here it is, fish where there are fish. <laughs> Did you get that? That's an important one. There are many times I see people fishing in locations. I know there's no fish. They're fishing. They're not catching. They wonder the problem. Rule number one, fish where there are fish. Peter knew the rule. There is rule number two. Rule number two for the note takers is this. Fish with methods that will catch the fish. Those are the two rules of fishing. And Peter knew rule number two as well. Now, here's what happened to Peter. I'm an amateur fisherman. He was a professional fisherman, but we both know the rules. When he heard that, he had a fisherman's thoughts. Who is this preacher telling me to put out the nets? Doesn't he understand in the lake of Gennesaret, the fish are not near the shore during the daytime. They're in the deep water. We had fished all night, the story tells us. They've been fishing in the shallows. That's when the fish come into that area. That's where the fish are in the night, but not the day. The second thing he said, we put out the nets. Peter's thinking to himself, this isn't going to work because the water's clear. You throw the net. The fish sees the net. It flees. So a preacher has just asked him to violate two rules of fishing. But, you know, there's something about the words of Jesus when Jesus whispers that word and you hear that voice, even if all you, some of your logic sensors aren't lining up, you know that if you'll just obey in that moment and you'll do what Jesus is asking you to do, that you'll be doing the right thing. So at his bidding, Peter let down the nets. They let down the nets. And this is what the Scripture said. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. Peter signaled his partners in the other boat, and he said, come and help me. And they filled both boats up till they were about to sink. And then you remember the story Sam and Peter realizing that this wasn't about fishing for fish. This wasn't about an encounter with God showing him that if he would obey God, that things would happen he could not imagine. And so Peter falls on his knees and says, Go away, Lord, I'm a sinful man. It says in verse 9, He and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Debedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus looks to Simon right in the eye and says, Simon, from now on, you will be fishing for people. From now on, you will be fishing for people. Maybe you know what this 
conference is all about, but let me just say, it is about Grace Church, a church that was created to fish for people. It is about Grace Church saying, we are going to be Christ's witnesses right here, we're going to be there, and we are going to be everywhere. And we are going to continue to be a church that is about the business of the Lord's work and be His witnesses in our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. If I'm correct, this is your 14th year of having a missions conference like this. And every year on this Sunday, you come together as a church to say again, Oh God, move among us. Let us be a congregation that goes out and we catch fish. We not just know the rules, but we go out and we catch the fish. Now let me go back to the rules. The rules. Rule number one, if you want to catch fish, is fish where there's fish. I've got some good news for you. There's a lot of fish out there. There's a lot of fish. Last year I had the privilege to be here on this same Sunday morning. We did an illustration together where I broke the room up into thirds. And, and one, I'm not going to do it again this year, but I just want to remind you of it. One third of the world, I said, those represent all the Christians of the world by whatever denomination you call yourself. One third of the world today are Christians, and they are saying, in essence, thank you, Jesus. There's another third of the world, they are not yet Christians, but they have access to the gospel, and that one third of the world, in essence, is saying, no, thank you, Jesus. They have heard, but they're not responding. Then there is another one-third of the world, and the other third of the world lives without access to the gospel. And that one-third of the world is essentially saying today, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? So one-third, thank you, Jesus. One-third, no thank you, Jesus. And one-third, who is Jesus? Now here's the th point I want to make to you. That's over seven billion people in the world. That's a lot of fish in the sea. Now, to some people, they'd say, that's kind of some discouraging news. But when you're a fisherman, you got a whole different mindset. What you see as a fisherman is opportunity, opportunity. Let me talk for a minute about here, right here in the United States of America. We have some serious challenges in the USA. One little simple question that was asked of 5,200 people was a basic question about your faith and belief that when you died, whether you'd go to heaven or not. And they asked it of four generational groups. Interesting, the group that was born before 1946 in the United States of America, 65% of all the people, two-thirds said, if I die tonight, I'm going to heaven. I have that kind of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you drop down to 46, 1946 to 64, that's my generation, it drops to 35%, just a little over one-third. If you go to the next grouping, 65 to 76, it goes to 15%. And if you go to those born after 1976 in the United States of America, it drops down to 4% that have confidence that if they died tonight, they would go to heaven. What that tells me is there's a lot of fish out there in the pond, people that need to know the love of God and need to know the redeeming and saving work of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you about the millennial generation. I have two Children, one is Hannah, our daughter, one is Caleb, our son. They've just recently graduated from the university. They're both in their 20s, and they comprise what we call the millennial generation in America. Interesting thing about that generation, if you ask them, how many of you would say, I'm born again? 20% would say, I'm born again. I was amazed, actually, to kind of know that. We hear so much negative news. That was good. But then they asked that same group, Seven basic questions about the fundamentals of the Christian faith, and it dropped down to something like 6%. Some of us in this room today, those that, who are missionaries, and some that partner with missionaries, specifically in different places, some of your partners here at Grace Church work among unreached people groups all over the world. Here's the reality that I'm beginning to understand more deeply myself. Unless something changes, we're going to be defining the next generation of young people in the United States of America as an unreached people group. Now, that could be bad news unless you're a fisherman. And what that says to me as a fisherman is what an opportunity. And actually, what we talk to that generation, you discover they are spiritually hungry. You discover that generation is looking to older men and women to speak into their lives. You discover that there's actually a deep spiritual hunger. And the issue is really not whether they really want to know God. It's the fact is, is God been made relevant to them so they can understand 
Well, I'm so excited to be at Grace Church because you are a church that gets it. You understand, and you're reaching people every single week on your campuses and through your partners. You understand that it's important to fish where the fish are. You have refined ministries and strategies, and you are intentional about going to where the fish are right here in the United States of America. Well, not only that, you're intentional about the other parts of the world. You're not only here, but you're there, and you're everywhere. There are fish in the pond. Brothers and sisters, did you hear what I said? There are fish in the pond. In the pond, we know where they are. We know where they are. Now, here's the second rule. To catch the fish, you have to use methods that will actually catch them. You have to use the right means and ways and tools. Now, when I go fishing, I use all kinds of, of different things. Right, right here, I don't know if you can see this right here, but this right here would be uh, what's called a fly. That's one I actually use, salt water. I love to fish with it. I use it with a fly rod. It's very small. Put a small tippet on it, and I love to use a fly rod. It's my favorite way to fish. You know, when I go bass fishing, then I, I, one of my favorite lures is to take and use a square-lipped plug, and this little bright guy right here can really work on some bass. When I up my game a little more and we go after bigger fish, then it takes something else. It takes, you know, 80 to 100-pound monofluorocarbon fluorocarbon to do it, and a, and a big lure with big, sharp, saltwater class hooks. Whatever it is, when you go fishing, you've got to use the right methods. The right methods. Now, this is fishing for mammals, but when we talk about fishing for souls, we've we got to talk something bigger. We've got to something more. When we go fishing for souls, you've got to get some really serious, big-time bait right here, <laughs> right? I mean, we're not talking about catching fish. We're talking about souls. We're talking something of lasting in eternal value when we talk about the work of the Lord. I want to talk to you for a few minutes about how to fish. I don't need to speak to you about here because you're a great church doing here. Just keep it up and keep doing more. In your here ministries, you have many different partners that help you to reach out in special ways to different people. I want to talk to you particularly today about some of your mission partners, your mission partners that are your special partners for going there and everywhere to help reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. The power of partnership is extremely important. Whenever a fisherman goes to a new place, they know that they need more than a map. They need a guide. They need someone who knows what to do, how to do it, if they want to be effective. When Jesus gave you the commandment as a church to go out to other places beyond this here zone, you knew you would need great partners. And so along your journey, you have been intentional, and you have found amazing and great partners, those that are specialists in their area. And you have come alongside them to help them to be more effective and at the same time fulfill your God-given call to be Christ's witnesses here, there, and everywhere. I want to just look at a couple of stories with you very quickly. And so if you're going to look at the screen right here, I want to take you and show you a picture here. This is a picture from India. This is a picture related to Peter and Esther Pereira and their incredible ministry. You are one of their very significant partners. Benita was a widow for 18 years. She wanted to be trained to be more effective as a Christian witness. God spoke to her powerfully as she was being equipped by Peter and Esther in the team. Because of persecution, she had to go from her city and live in Bhubaneswar. There in Bhubaneswar, she began to work literally as a housemaid. The owners of the house had a daughter. The daughter fell sick. The doctors could do nothing. And Benita asked if I could, she could pray for her, and she prayed for her, and she was healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And because of that... And because of that, that family came unto the Lord. Glory to God. That is a Grace Church story because of the power of partnership. Look at the next picture right here. I love this picture. This is a picture taken in the United States of America. This comes from your partnership with Bree Butler that was raised in this church and who works on a national level in disaster relief with Samaritan's Purse. This lady's home was flooded. Samaritan's Purse came in and they helped to get the house back in order. They got the house back in order. They presented her with a Bible. They shared the gospel with her, but this is important, without pressure, without pressure, just shared the gift of God. And some days later, she came to them and said, I want to ask Jesus into my life now, too. Praise the Lord. 
This is your ministry, Grace Church. Look at the next picture. This is a picture from Cuba. This is Pastor Bo, and you have a partnership in Cuba. And one of their needs was for Bibles. And this church, through your faith promise offering, raised funds and provided Bibles so the Word of God could go forth. I saw an article this week in the National News for United Methodists talking about the revival in Cuba. You have a hand in the revival in Cuba because the Word of God is being there. Thank you, Grace Church. Look at this young lady right here. This is a part of Servant Cinder Ministry. This is Marie and Nolan Shockey working on the border with, uh, with Mexico and the USA, one of the most difficult places. This young girl right her, here is a family of six. She's the next to the youngest. Her brother, one of her older brothers at 19, died from a drug overdose. Two of her brothers were brutally shot and killed a mile and a half from their house. She has endured tragedy and difficulty beyond what we can understand here. Through the ministry of Marie and Nolan, they reached out to her. They began to be a part of their ministry. She grew in Christ. She gave her life to Christ. God sent a young man into her life, and she is married today, and she is an entirely different place because of Grace Church and your ministry through your partners, the Shockies. Praise the Lord. One of your special ministries is with 12 churches uh, in Nicaragua. I just want to show this is a church in an area with 80 families that had no church. This is the only picture I'm showing you of a building, but I want you to know kind of what does a building look like for a church in a place where there was no church. One time I was with Peter Pereira, and we went to a new place where the church had been planted. They had a little celebration. I was sitting in a chair. There were children right across from me, and as clear as I hear the Holy Spirit whisper, I heard the Lord whisper in my ear, it took 2,000 years, but I got a church here now. Grace Church, because of what you're doing, helping with partnering, you're building in a church in a place where there's not been one. Go to the next picture. This is the family you're supporting, the pastor through 12 churches. It's an amazing ministry, Grace Church. This is your partner. Praise the Lord. Next one. This is your own Frank Welch, right out of your own church right here, called to be a missionary, in training right now. This is when he was out on one of the teams. Frank, we are praying for you, and we're excited, and we know this year that God is in the process of revealing where he's going to send you. This is one of your young people raised up, sent to, going to, sent to the field. Grace Church, this is a partnership that's going to be significant in your days ahead. Thank you, Frank, for being obedient. And then let me just take you, last one, I, I, it's something I'd love to tell, but let me just take you over to Ghana, West Africa. Lawrence Becker here is with the, the ministry going on, a part of this conference. This is Mike Mosley, one of your partners. This is Eddie, one of the young men that Mike's been a part of investing in his life, and he's planted, been planting churches in recent years. Seven churches have been planted recently. Grace Church, you are a significant part of this work in this place through Eddie and through Lawrence Becker, whom I call an apostle in Western Africa. We thank God for every one of these partnerships. Now, those are just a few stories, but I wanted to mention them to you. Now, let me review. There are two rules for fishing. Rule number one, fish where they're fish. Rule number two, use methods that will catch the fish. And as part of methods, work with partners that can help you to go even beyond what you could do alone. Now, there's one last thing I do want to tell you. There is one more rule for fishing. If you want to actually catch fish, you need to have one more thing. That is the will or the commitment, the desire to catch the fish. You see, sometimes I've taken people fishing where the fish were. I've showed them how to do it, but if they didn't really want to catch them, guess what happened? We didn't catch any fish or not many. But when I've been with people who knew the two rules and then really wanted to, that is, it was a passion for them. That was a desire for them. My brothers and sisters, what that means for us in the church is that we understand that it's a big task ahead of us. And we understand that when we are fishing for people, that it's about the eternal work of God, sharing Christ with this lost world and seeing them experience the power and the redeeming work of God Almighty in their lives. What is this conference about today? It's about this church saying again, we not only know where the fish are, we not only know how, but we are committed. We're committed as a church, and in just a few minutes, on every single campus, you're going to have an opportunity to make a fresh commitment for what it's going to take for Grace Church over this next year to be faithful to here, there, and everywhere. I want to just tell you three things briefly that you need to do to renew your commitment today under the Lord. 
First of all, I want to talk to you about giving. Giving, a different kind of giving than your regular offerings. I want to talk to you about faith, promise, giving. There's a card that you've received, and that card on it has a little explanation about why faith promise is different than other kinds of giving. Faith promise is something this church has been doing for 14 years. It's a day when you take this card and you say, oh God, beyond what I give through other ministries of the church, beyond that, what would you want to give through me for missions over the next 12 months? On this card, you'll notice it's not a place to put your name. This is a commitment between you and the Lord over the lost of the world and reaching out in Christ's name. On this card, it says this, that I or we have faith that the Lord will provide, as indicated on this card, money over the next 12 months. And when God gives it, we'll be faithful to pass it along. It's in addition to my regular giving. And there's some check boxes here if you think about what you might give weekly or monthly or for the year. Many of you have learned how to give by faith. You have learned that God will honor what you put on this card. God will provide it for you, and God is going to then use that for you to fulfill the God-given mission of Grace Church to fish for people. The second thing that you need to do is you need to be about going. You need to be about saying, I am available to serve. Every single person today, every single person at Grace Church can be going right here. In your local area, everyone has a place of ministry. Everyone can be serving. Find your place to serve. And then beyond that, be open to where God would take you on a short-term mission trip. One of the teams that you hear about, be open for the Holy Spirit to speak to you and say, God wants to use you there. Maybe the U.S. It may be beyond. And for someone here, you may be sensing God today even, calling you for the first time or renewing a call to you to serve him in full-time service, full-time missions. It could be here, there, it could be everywhere. But I want to invite you today to be open to that sense of calling. So if we're going to have the commitment, it's going to be about our giving, it's going to be about our going, and the third thing is about praying. There's an image in the book of Revelation that helps me for prayer. It says that the prayers of the saints ascend before the throne of God like incense, and God answers with thunder. Nothing of eternal significance will happen without praying. So today, too, I want to invite you and urge you to commit yourself to prayer every day that Grace Church would be a fisher of people. There was a man fishing in a lake, and there was a man on the shore watching him. The man in the boat who was fishing would occasionally catch fish, and when he would catch a little fish, he would put it in the boat. When he would catch a big fish, he kept throwing it back. The man on the shore watched for a while, and then he shouted out, Mr. Fisherman, why do you keep the little fish and you throw the big fish back? Now, let me just comment as a fisherman. I was raised keeping the big fish. My grandfather made me throw the little ones back to let them grow up. So we kept the big ones. We threw the little ones back. I one time shared this story in one country, and I said, how does fishing work in your country? And they said, we keep them all. (laughs) They do. He said, Mr. Fisherman, why do you keep the small fish? And you throw the big fish back. And the fisherman reached down the bottom of his boat, and he pulled up a small cooking pan. A small cooking pan. Grace Church, have a big vision. Don't just go after the small fish. Believe that God wants to do great, eternal, and lasting things through you. I'm going to pray for you, and then one of your pastors is going to be coming forward and giving you more instructions. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we come before you now as Grace Church on every one of our campuses and through all of our online community, and we say today, oh God, Use us to be fishers of people. Use us to share the eternal message of the Lord Jesus Christ and His redeeming love. Use us to help see this world come to you. Almighty God, today, show each one of us how we should be giving, how we should be going, and how we should be praying. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.